All right, let's have a look at the history of Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease particularly has a well-known history. The work of Alois Alzheimer is uh, central to this. But if we look back, and you might not be able to read that little yeah. slide that you have there. This is, uh, I'll, I'll read some of this to you, but it really uh, highlights um, the importance of various people in the development of our understanding of what Alzheimer's disease is today. Because if you think about it, there was one particular patient who I'll, we'll see a photograph of shortly, who was really important for, for Alzheimer in the way that he was able to identify and just list the range of her symptoms. But he wasn't the first to do so. There are a number of other people here who were the teachers of a fellow called Emil Kraepelin. Now Kraepelin is important for his broad understanding of psychiatric illness. And he was important in formulating a lot of the knowledge of that time in, um, in lists of symptoms that belong to various conditions. Now he, that, that sort of ability to put things into categories was really important for our, our, our knowledge about psychiatric illness, psychopathology. And only then do people like Franz Nissel and Alois Alzheimer come into the scene. So these are the beneficiaries of this tendency to formulate diseases into lists of symptoms associated with particular labels. So they're much better at that at the turn of the century, the 19th and 20th centuries. I'll just read this little description here of Alois Alzheimer's work. He describes the clinico-pathological case of August Dieter with emphasis on senile plaques and neurofibrillary tangles. Significant contributions to the research of general paresis or illness. Following that, following Alzheimer, we get a number of other people who are his students, including Frederick Louis, Louis body. He identified the Louis bodies. And Kreutzfeld, uh, Kreutzfeld and Alphonse Jacob. Yeah. And Hugo Cialetti, who developed an emphasis on electroconvulsive therapy, ECT. We have Kreutzfeld Jakob disease and dementia with Louis bodies developing from the work of Frederick Louis. Welcome. So we've got quite a, a, a heritage there of the work of Alzheimer, benefiting from the work of people like Kraepelin, etc. And at the same time, what enabled Alzheimer to do his work was the development of microscopes. That might sound like an odd thing, but what he did was he took very thin slices of brain tissue and he treated them in a particular way and then he stained them. It was the development of the staining technique and the development of the microscope that enabled him to identify the plaques and the tangles. So without those two things, the developments of Alzheimer and his insights into the fact that these unusual brain phenomena on his slide were associated with the presence of these symptoms. That was the connection that he made that was quite unique. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So here is August D. August D. This is a photograph of her in the later stages of her dementia. This is the description that Alzheimer wrote about her. Reduced comprehension and memory, aphasia. Is everyone familiar with aphasia? Aphasia simply means the difficulty expressing and receiving and understanding language. Disorientation, unpredictable behaviour, paranoia auditory hallucinations, psychosocial impairment, judgment from the frontal lobes. 
So that's the behavioural description. And then we see on the slides he was able to identify neuritic plaques, what we commonly know as senile plaques or amyloid plaques, and neurofibrillary tangles, the tangles within the brain, so the brain cell itself. And he also identified on autopsy arteriosclerotic changes. In other words, she had vascular disease as well. So this is Auguste. She's a very important person. And it was her condition after which Alzheimer's disease was named. Any questions? Yeah. Because uh, with dementia, where I come from, from Zimbabwe, we, got, um, we don't have dementia, really. It's something that we've been learning about in the books. Maybe the only one that we have at the moment is the HIV. Uh, maybe they use a different name because we call it HIV encephalopathy. I don't know if that's the yep. same thing or yep. something else different. That one is the only thing that I've, mes I've witnessed. But in our elderly, we never get them to have dementia. They can be 90 years, 80 years, but they don't have. So I still import this question to say, is it in certain continents or why the difference? It's very interesting. Um, is there a large older population in Zimbabwe? Yes, we have. And we, we also have some cases like CVA is very common, strokes is very common, but we don't get to get people with dementia. Okay. Also the same with swallowing problems, like here you find someone, most of the people in the nursing homes, okay. they've got swallowing problems, but with us, we never get those problems. Someone, do, you, do you have nursing homes over there? Or is the family taking care of the elderly? Oh, the family. That's why I think there's less known about it because it might not be mm. institutionalized. <coughs> is it stage within the family? No, no, but the community will be knowing. Like within the community would really be knowing, oh, Mrs. So and so, she's living with the family, but they've got confusion, they've got all these symptoms. Mm -hmm. But we don't have them. So the families don't describe these symptoms? No. I myself have got some relatives that I've seen as I was growing, getting old, and you know, but never, never have in the big extended family that I come from, we've never, never had. Well, it's a very interesting phenomenon. Um, in Japan, it's something similar in the sense that they have a, a very low level of vascular disease. And it's largely due to diet because of the heavy rice but in Zimbabwe, I'm not sure, I, I don't understand enough about the unique conditions in Zimbabwe that might explain that. Well, we know that lifestyle is a huge factor. So mm -hmm. it may well be. And maybe maybe the diet as well. Yeah. 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 We eat from yeah. our own garden, from our own field. Yeah. And some of the few things they buy from the shops. But actually like maybe eighty percent of what we eat in the home, yeah. it's all homegrown. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very good example. Yeah, as Bimba said it's the same in our country as well. In Nepal? Yeah, in Nepal. We don't really see the uh, dementia or those things. We find people like uh, when they are very old, they say like, okay, they're the mental, like, you know, they... Um, Do they call it something else? Something else, but not actually, I haven't heard the word dementia before I came to Australia, even I was nursing before, uh -huh. I was working in hospital, like, yeah. But so there is no nursing home though, like families taking care of them and uh, if they got any problem, they have to go to the hospital and those things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I didn't hear the word of dementia there. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Do you think it still happens, but they call I it? I think yeah. Way? That's what like some people I can see there. Like you know, they are a bit forgetful and they play with the feces and those sort of symptoms. I can see there as well. But I think they describe as a mental illness rather mm -hmm. than dementia. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't hear the word of dementia mm -hmm. there. I can see few people there mm -hmm. with I the similar symptoms. So yeah. yeah. Hidden because. You know, it's just a yeah, shame that, I mean. you know, 
grandmother is now really old now, and the family looking after her because she's. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we also have like some other mental sicknesses. We have mental hospitals where we used to recognize different cases, but not the dementia. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're suggesting even though there might be the recognition of other illnesses, oh, yes. there's, okay. there's not the incidence of dementia itself, even yeah. under any other name. But yes. saying that, if you say that, if you think of how this was treated, because it's not the they people with dementia were thrown into mental mental hospitals like the like the Q hospital where they were in or yes. Yes. But the thing though is that you do know that you do hear cases of people who keep their relatives chained at home, but those are young people who have maybe schizophrenia or something. Yeah. 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 Was yeah. acting up so we chained her. Like you hear like stories, but it's never yeah. anyone. It's not age related. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah the, the elderly mm -hmm. never. Yeah. Actually, when they become older, we actually go to them for advice. This is mostly what we do. Yes. 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 Dementia, no. because maybe she broke up. Maybe so just consider it's not a family role to look after the elderly when they get to that point. Okay, that's I talked to one of the fathers in Vietnam, like he's running the um, you know, um, charity in Vietnam regarding dementia uh, for elderly. Um, but then I asked him why, like, um, in Vietnam, we have like a small right image of people who suffer dementia. He told me either like um, we don't have enough funding to um, run what you said, like to know the number of it, because most of the uh, farmers who take care of who, who take care of their um, you know grandmother or grandfather. So firstly they don't have enough funding, that's what he told me. And then um, secondly he told me it might, you know, uh, it, it might be because of the lifestyle as well, because we community by so <coughs> we like in the neighborhood we we share everything. Mm -hmm. So they really like elderly has a good like elder has the good opportunities to share, you know, but they feel with with all the elders as well in the communities. Lots of activities in communities. Okay. So it, it that's what he told me that then it, it might be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Western people are strange people aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I think Western people are strange people in the because that's so beautiful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But in our Western society is so in we we like to put people in places or in corners or mm -hmm. give them like I think one factor is that yeah. um, um, like in our country our my like family take care of them like mostly son and uh, daughter-in-law. They have to take care of the parents when they get older and mm -hmm. sort of things. But in here, it's look like, you know, we'll be left over and more frustrated, depressed, and those is mm -hmm. more risk factor. Mm -hmm. That's what I can see one thing. But yeah, but I don't think that they can prevent like 100%, but sure. yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, I've I come to know the term dementia after I came last year 10 years ago. So before in China, we do use a term like senel. Senel. Yes, senel. And uh, sometimes like they mentioned before, cycle. Like cycle. Uh, but I think the my problem because the we can't say people getting age get dementia, but it's a trend. People a certain state, uh, most people get dementia when they reach out. And uh, so in, in the previous, because uh, most people would not get enough food, enough uh, essential uh, nutrition for for the brain to operate and then or for the body to heal from disease they can't live longer in China to same problem. Mm -hmm. But the recent years lots of people got dementia because they get they can live longer. Yeah. Like my that's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't die of the diseases yeah. they used yeah. to yeah. die. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's like long parents in law they got dementia. 
So because they live with uh, about 80, so they got dementia. There's people around this, oh, this mom got dementia, the mom's dad got dementia, but before because of age, so it's less chance for them to reach that stage of dementia. Yeah. So that's why we didn't realize okay. only after coming here. And, uh, and also because we mustn't then get haircutting at home, so some problem not noticed. Yeah. 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 yeah, there's a number of different factors that we're mentioning here that may well <coughs> go to explain it. It's very interesting how culturally different it is around the world. Okay. Good. Thanks very much. Let's have a look further at some of these plaques and tangles. Alzheimer was the first to describe the symptoms and the brain changes of senile decay, or as it was called. We've got a number of these terms turning up here for, uh, for, for what we've come to know as Alzheimer's disease and the dementia that's caused by it. But senile simply used to mean in, the, in, the, uh, in former times, it just meant old. Whereas, whereas the word senile now has come to mean having dementia. Whereas senile used to mean just old, he's old. The histology, which is the examination of the, uh, the brain tissue in very thin slices put onto the slide and looked at under the microscope with a stain to, uh, to identify the particular cell bodies, identified amyloid plaques outside the cells and neurofibrillary tangles inside the cells. So these fibres, neurofibres, were tangled to a point where they were not able to be processed in the normal way that they would be in a, f a fully functioning cell. So that caused the, the death of the brain cell. And the other factor was this build-up of amyloid plaque. Now plaques, we all know what plaque looks like on your teeth, it's a deposit. It's a, a, a conglomeration of amyloid, a protein. It's a little protein. Now we all have amyloid. But the person with Alzheimer's disease will have a much higher level of amyloid than you and me. Now, they're not sure if it's due to a failure to clear the amyloid. In other words, it builds up and then it's cleared away normally. And we know that that process does happen, but we're not sure if it's a failure to do that clearing or it's an unusual building up of the amyloid that might be contributing to it. So it's a lack of clarity about which of those is the, the hypothesis that should apply. And there's some evidence for both. These were the tangles that Alois Alzheimer drew from his microscopic slides. And the source for those is down the bottom of the slide. So these are the tangles within the cell. Here, in a very modern depiction, we've got a normally functioning neuron there up in the top left-hand corner, and there's amyloid plaques here around the cell, preventing it functioning appropriately, and then the neurofibrillary tangles inside the brain cell, which the neurofibrillary tangles are comprised of a protein called tau, T-A-U. And that tau is malformed, causing the tangles here inside the cell. This is the cell nucleus and the dendrites that are the connections from other brain cells. They connect here, the impulse, the neuron stimulates the impulse and then it travels down and it connects off to other neurons. These are the features of Alzheimer's disease that Alzheimer was able to identify. Cell loss, that in fact those two changes, amyloid plaques and the neurofibrillary tangles, cause, a cell, that cause the cell, the brain cell, the neuron to actually die. Dendritic degeneration, now what does that mean? It simply means that the dendrites, which are a bit like the branches on the tree, the flow of the information comes in from other neurons connected to the dendrites 
into the neuron itself, then the impulse goes out through the neuron, through the axon, down into connections with other dendrites attached to that neuron. Okay. So the dendrites are like the branches receiving the impulse, the nucleus stimulates the impulse through the neuron and the communication goes out to other neurons. So that the degeneration occurs because of that problem within the brain cell and the amyloid plaques outside the brain cell stops the processing and so the dendrites withdraw and so there's a lack of connection to other neurons, other brain cells. Does that make sense? So all those connections that have happened as we've learned and made the, the, the gradual learning that we do as infants and then as adults, all of those old connections gradually deteriorate so that the brain cell disconnects from other neurons around. Now you can have hundreds, thousands of connections to a neuron. Lots of connections. But and that's why you can have a certain amount of brain damage without it actually showing up in changes in function. But once that, that gets to a certain amount, then the brain cell itself will die once it's disconnected sufficiently. Oops, go back. The tangles and the plaques we've already mentioned. The final point here in terms of the changes in Alzheimer's disease is that there are neurotransmitter deficits. Now the neurotransmitters are chemicals that are in the brain, in the soup of the brain, that help to promote connectedness between neurons. <clears throat> the imp brain impulse or the communication from one brain cell to another happens because of chemical transmission. So once that impulse leaves one neuron, there is a chemical released that then is taken up by the next neuron and that is how information is passed on through the brain. But if there's not enough of these basic neurotransmitter chemicals, then that communication can't happen. Now there's several of these neurotransmitter chemicals that are really important for us. And there's a couple that are associated with mood. Does anybody know what they might be? Um, One of the dopamine and um, serotonin. serotonin. Dopamine and serotonin. <coughs> so if there's not enough serotonin, what happens to your mood? It goes down. Goes down. So we have now what are called SSRI drugs, which means. Can anyone tell me what that means? Um, yes, yeah. selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So what, that's, what that drug does is it restricts the reuptake of serotonin. So it keeps more serotonin available for transmission from one neuron to another. It's selectively it selects for serotonin and it inhibits reuptake. Now reuptake is when the neuron, once it releases the serotonin, if it's not taken up, it will <coughs> reuptake it. It will go back up into the neuron. So what's happening here is that that process of reuptake is inhibited. It's stopped or slowed down. So antidepressant, this SSRIs, and there's a family of them, those SSRIs, the antidepressants that are <coughs> focused on these serotonin reuptake inhibitors, are solely focused on that particular process. And what's some of the most common ones that we know of? SSRIs. Cipramin? Prozac? These are the more common ones. All right. Okay, that's just to give you an illustration of what a neurotransmitter is. They are chemicals that help the brain to function, that facilitate brain function. And we'll have a look at some of them as we go through.